Hevea brasiliensis trees are planted to get the rubber. However, many people do not know its name as it is popular as para rubber tree. It belongs to the spurge family and looks very fascinating to the eye as it is a flowering plant. The tree is native to the Amazon basin and now has spread worldwide. In the beginning, it was limited to its origination. Anyhow, after its introduction to the world, it spread quickly and soon its plantation turned into a lucrative business. It is an impressive height tree of 43 meters that is about 141 inches, but this height is of those that are in the Amazon basin. The cultivated trees are usually less height than them as tapping the latex causes a reduction in growth. However, fellas, don't reduce your growth with us, but to grow with us. Hit the subscribe button and share with your friends for fast growth. The rubber tree is considered the basic economic tree of tropical areas worldwide, especially in Southeast Asia. The Association of Natural Rubber Producing Countries, ANRPC, estimates that from 2003 to 2010, more than 1.5 million hectares of ground was turned into rubber trees in many countries such as Thailand, China, and Vietnam. Rubber plantation is a lucrative business. Usually they plant 200 trees in an area of one acre. Moreover, 200 trees can produce 10 rubber sheets just in a single day. From these calculations, a farmer can have 150 kilograms of rubber yield. That is why, currently, this business is expanding fast even in non-traditional regions such as Myanmar, India, and Laos. Giant Hevea trees are not only useful in extracting rubber, but also for wood. In both ways, it remains a legitimate source of income. Good soil drainage and sufficient rainfall is crucial for them. Furthermore, the rainy season is an optimal part of the plantation. Land must be free of grass and weeds. However, for rapid and healthy growth of the trees, proper management, fertilization, pest control, removal of in-time weeds, and tapping techniques are the basic requirements for a healthy field, yield, and profitable business. Don't skip the most fascinating part, as it is yet to come, and you are going to enjoy the procedure on the latex sap and how to make mattresses and gloves. While talking about tapping techniques, it is vital to keep in mind that there are many ways and techniques for rubber extraction that a farmer uses on his farm. There are many techniques known as puncture tapping, S8 tapping, and conventional half spiral tapping. In puncture tapping, a puncture is made in the tree trunk and the latex begins to exude. It is usually done with ethereal stimulation. It helps in increasing the production of latex. S8 tapping covers the tree in a spiral way, only one eighth of the verge. For a better outcome, it also can be used with ethereal stimulation. S2 tapping has also the same cutting pattern. However, each cut is made below its precursor. Keep in mind that to get the latex, tapping is a must-do part that gradually increases production. Anyways, these particular methods should be chosen according to the circumstances and requirements and factors such as soil, tree age, and climatic situations. Simultaneously, the most common technique is known as the coagulation technique. The coagulation method unfolds a remarkable process. This procedure starts with the cutting of bark through the tree in a thin layer. From that cut, a milky liquid comes out. This liquid is the latex that after processing turns into rubber. Trees are tapped every two days to get the latex. 
These sessions provide a cup of latex yield that contains almost 50 grams of solid rubber. Usually this tapping covers scoring the javias with a knife. This cut is done in half of the trunk and the other half remains solid and unwounded. It starts from the left towards the right at the angle of 30, initiating from the highest suitable notch. However, it is also essential to give proper rest to the trees if heavy tapping is done. Latex production specifically initiates as the tree approaches the age of almost five to six years. Moreover, proper care increases the tree's life up to 20 years. Do you want to share your country's name with us from where your eyes are watching? After collecting the whole latex, it is gathered in one place. The drainage process begins. All the process is done by hand. After drainage in huge containers, they pour all the substance, add some water and heat the latex. Then after keeping it at a specific temperature, they pour it into trays for being cold. As it gets cold, they add more additives and acids into it to develop rubber's properties like durability and elasticity. This concoction is all set to mold into a shaping procedure for mattresses and gloves. However, before preparing such stuff, they are just solidified. Shaping and solidity procedures are yet to be done. It is called the curing process that is essential for the final shape of the product. Whether the curing process gives the rubber a final destination for the mattresses for a peaceful sleep or for gloves to protect your hands. This session saturates the rubber with its impressive durability qualities. Acidic waters and additives add to your final product a quality control measure and it also upholds the highest standards. From checking the flexibility measures of rubber gloves to inquiring about the consistency of mattress foam. Everything has been taken care of by customer satisfaction and the long lasting of the product by the Dunlop process. This procedure turns the liquid into foam. This procedure involves the mixing of the liquid first, combined with stabilizers to heat the substance until it gets the expected density. After that, workers add gelling agents. Usually, mattress core factories purchase almost 40 tons of liquid latex foam from the processing facility. To prepare a 30 kilo mattress, they need about 50 kilograms of liquid latex. When the core is ready, workers wash, dry, and squeeze the foam. At this notch, it is all set to packaging. That is the reason behind the high rates of these mattresses and gloves because they are made of natural latex, rubber mattresses and gloves to uphold the magnificent climatic implementations. The process has some extra sessions like bleaching and hand molding. Moreover, the gloves need some extra care in manufacturing as the bleaching and additives should cover the whole shape to form long durability gloves that have less chance of having holes in them. On the contrary, Imitative alternatives that are usually based on fossil fuels and dangerous pollutants, the rubber from natural latex support biodiversity and carbon segregation. So, in this way, if consumers choose mattresses and gloves made from Havia trees, they play an important role in preserving the future of our next generation. So here was a foamy but squashy journey that took you from the Amazon basins to peaceful sleep and gloves for your hands to take care of. Hope you enjoy the ride with us.